Good morning, and I bring you best wishes from the Vatican Dicastery for Integral Human Development, especially from the sector on ecology and creation. And this morning, I thank you for the invitation to speak at your festival on the theme of Laudato Si and Creation Care. Laudato Si, this great gift that Pope Francis made to the entire church and to the entire world, the entire planet, we might say, in, in June 2015, has the subtitle, Caring for Our Common Home. Now, this text has been described by someone like Jail Damison of New York as the most important environmental text of the 21st century. Let's be said, it's not just about environment that he speaks. He speaks about our common home. It is oikos logos. It's caring about our common home. And this morning, I would like to offer some reflections on the encyclical in relation with the theme of creation care in two parts. First of all, describe what is the crisis of our common home? What is the ecological crisis? And I hope to offer you a holistic perspective looking at the crisis from a physical, moral, and spiritual dimension. So let's begin with the, the physical dimension of the crisis. In Laudato Si, paragraph 61, Pope Francis says, we need only take a frank look at the facts to see that our common home is falling into serious disrepair. And uh, in the very first chapter of the encyclical entitled, What is Happening to Our Common Home? Pope Francis enumerates the various crises. We have, uh, it begins with pollution, then we have climate change, we have biodiversity laws, we have the depletion of natural resources, especially water. And he gives a very masterly synthesis of the many crises at the physical level facing our common home. And this is what Pope Francis says, I quote him, these several aspects of the present ecological crisis are what Pope Francis calls cracks in the planet that we inhabit. And uh, we can conclude this first section on the physical dimension of the crisis, quoting Lynn White, who already in 1967 said, surely no creature other than human being has ever managed to foul its nest in such short order. Uh, so this is where we are. Our common home is falling into ruin. But we need to go deeper. The crisis is not just physical. The crisis is also moral, it's ethical. And the great Pope John Paul II, Saint John Paul II, already in 1990, in his message for the World Day of Peace, uh, peace with creation, peace with the creator, he said that we are, uh, the ecological crisis is a moral crisis. And that's the reason why Pope Francis says in Laudato Si 49 that we need to listen to the cry of the earth and the cry of the poor. Now, why is it a moral crisis? Precisely for the fact that, fact that the victims, the early and disproportionate victims of the crisis are the poor who have contributed least to causing the crisis, but they are the ones who are already suffering most from the crisis. I just quote a fact from uh, two important scholars, Partha Dasgupta, an economist in Cambridge, and Virabhadran Ramanathan uh, of Climate Change Science in Berkeley in the USA. Uh, they came out with a study and they showed how the top one billion people contribute 50% of all greenhouse gas emissions, the top one billion people. The further uh, three billion people contribute as much as 45% of the greenhouse gas emissions, and the poor, the three billion people remaining, contribute just 5% of the greenhouse gas emissions. So in a way, we might say that the world is divided into two, the, the rich communities, the rich people who cause climate change and other aspects of the ecological crisis, 
and the poor who are suffering. And we have seen, we are seeing all the more the effects of climate change around the world. And so this is the reason Pope Francis reminds us in Laudato Si, we are not faced with two separate crises, one environmental and the other social, but rather with one complex crisis, which is both social and environmental. So it is a physical crisis, but it is also a moral crisis. Now let's go one step even further. The ecological crisis is also a spiritual, religious crisis. Because at the deepest level, the crisis is profoundly spiritual, it's religious. And there's a beautiful quote from Pope Benedict XVI, who in 2005, during the mass of, his, of the inauguration of, of his pontificate, he said, the external deserts are growing because the, the internal deserts have become so vast. So if there is crisis outside there, it is a reflection of the disharmony of the crisis within us. In fact, the second title, the uh, second chapter of the encycl encyclical Laudato Si uh, carries this beautiful title. I mean, it's entitled The Gospel of Creation. That creation is good news is creation is really gospel. And uh, the current ecological predicament has resulted precisely from our refusal to see Earth as God's creation and to love and cherish it beyond mere considerations of utility and consumption. So this is the first part of my, my small conference, uh, describing the ecological crisis from a physical, moral, and spiritual dimension. Now we go to the second part of this of my intervention. Why Christians should care for creation? And there are seven reasons, fundamental reasons, for which we need to care for creation. First of all, it is Earth is God's creation. Secondly, Earth creation is God's primordial revelation. Thirdly, Earth is the very home of God, not just of humanity and of other living beings, but also God dwells with us. And the fourth reason is that the commandment that we received already in Genesis is to care for this creation. A fifth reason is that we need to promote life, so we need to, we need to take care of everything. A sixth reason is that we need to care for God in our poor brothers and sisters. And the seventh reason is that the entire creation is destined to be de recapitulated in Christ. That's, it, that's eschatology of creation. Let's briefly dwell on each of this. First of all, the fact that Earth is not just matter. Earth is not just heap of soil. Earth is God's creation. In, the, in our creed that we recite every Sunday, the very first article says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So uh, the earth is really God's creation, and God created it out of love. Out, and the, the earth and the entire universe is an outpouring of this infinite love of God. And that's what Dante said, and Pope Francis quotes him, that the entire universe is moved, is propelled by the infinite love of God. So we need to take care of the earth because it is God's creation, is loved by the Lord. A second fundamental reason for which we Christians need to take care of creation is that creation is God's revelation. Rather, it's God's primordial revelation. The fathers of the church spoke of two books. There is the book of works and the book of words, the Bible as we know. But the, before the Bible came, there was the book of works, God, as Calvin himself said, God writes in the flowers, in the trees of nature around us. And, uh, and creation is, is God's first book of works, and we need to see it as, as God's revelation, where every flower, uh, every bird is a symbol. We might even say it's a sacrament of God. And in this, in this regard, we might remember the example of St. Francis of Assisi, that seeing a little uh, flower he would go into ecstasy. Seeing a landscape, he would begin singing the praises of the Lord because the creation reveals God. 
And the third reason for which we Christians need to take care of creation is that earth is also God's own home. Genesis 1-3, we read, the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. The Spirit of God is present in the entire universe. And all the more with the uh, event of incarnation, as Thayer de Chardin loved to say, uh, God really came, chose this planet to be incarnated. And we might remember the beautiful expression of St. John, uh, John 1, 14, uh, the, 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 the God's word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. The original version says, God pitched his tent among us. So earth is sacred because God resides with us. And Matthew 28, 20 says, Behold, I am with you. I am with you till the end of time. So our earth is also God's home. And the fourth reason for which we Christians need to take care of, of earth is that that was the first command that we received. We read in Genesis 2.15, uh, God telling Adam and Eve, till and keep this garden, cultivate this garden. Significantly, for Benedict in 2010, in the message for the World Day of Peace, it was entitled, if you want to cultivate peace, take care of creation. So, we, the, the, so this is uh, a commandment we have been given right from the beginning, and it's a responsibility. The earth is, we are not the, the proprietors of the earth. Earth is entrusted to our care, and we need to be good, responsible stewards for God. A fifth reason for which we Christians need to take care of creation is that we need to promote life. Uh, in the Genesis, we read God telling, let life be there and let life multiply in the, in the oceans, in the waters, on the land, everywhere. And God's plan for the earth is that life should exist and life should multiply. And John 10.10, 10, Jesus says, I came so that you, you may have life, and life in all its fullness. So caring for creation, caring for our planet Earth, our common home, is very much a pro-life issue. Uh, climate change scientists tell us that if we go on like this, by the end of the century, we, we might lose one-third of all species on the Earth and we cannot afford to do it. That's going against God's plan to allow life to exist and flourish on, on earth created by him. And the sixth reason for which we need to care for God's creation, as we mentioned already in the first part, is that the poor, our poor brothers and sisters are suffering. And uh, Matthew uh, chapter 25, we read, that when we take care of the poor, we are taking care of Jesus himself. That was the, the, the verse that struck someone like Mother Therese of Calcutta, uh, that uh, the, the, this particular verse that Jesus, say, that Jesus said, I was hungry, I was thirsty, I was naked, I was in prison, I was suffering, I was sick, I was a stranger, and you came to help me. And the climate change, as we said, is causing great suffering to so many communities around the world. So when we take care of the poor, we are taking care of God. And it's a responsibility. It's a vocation because in the poor, we encounter Jesus himself. And the very last reason for which we need to take care of creation is that the entire creation has a destiny, has a telos. Creation is not there just for us to buy and sell and do whatever we want. As St. Paul says in the letter to Colossians, again in Ephesians, and in both cases, in the very first chapter, the entire universe will be recapitulated in Christ. So our earth, all creatures, all of us walking towards this eschatological destiny where everything will be assumed, will be recapitulated in Christ who will uh, offer back to the Father the entire creation. So creation has this very noble, uh, high vocation to be recapitulated, recapitulated in Christ. And we need to respect, we need to assist God in this journey of, of the entire creation of all creatures towards God. So this is uh, the little 
messages that I would like to offer you this morning. We saw in the first part how the ecological crisis is a very global crisis. It's not just the physical dimension of the crisis. There is also the, the moral, ethical dimension. And at the, at, the most, at the deepest level, it is a spiritual crisis. In the second part, we saw the various reasons for which we need to take care of God's creation. And I hope that your meeting, your festival, will really, as John 2.17 says, will enkindle that zeal, that passion, that fire within us to take care of this one beautiful home that we have. That is earth, beautiful, it's so fragile. And I conclude thanking for Francis for the beautiful and encycl encyclical the Laudato Si. We are nearly three years into its publication. Now it's time to put into practice Laudato Si. And uh, I'm sure your conference, our efforts at the Vatican around the world will definitely help so that we can preserve our beautiful home for ourselves, for the rest of the humanity, for the entire uh, bi biosystem and species, and so that we can, all this entire creation can be preserved in God's love, can return to God's love. Thank you very much.